In this video, I'm going to be bringing you my first impressions of the brand new Frozen Mini 8KS. This machine was very kindly sent over to me by Frozen and is a sponsored video, but I'll do my best to remain unbiased as we go through this. So for anyone who's unfamiliar with this machine, it's basically an alternative to the Frozen Mini 8K, but a much, much cheaper version of it. It basically has all the good stuff that came with the Mini 8K. So it has that gorgeous 8K resolution print display, and it also has a really nice and decent print bed. And one of the best things about this printer, especially if you're a miniature printer, is the fact that you're able to print at 22 ohms, which basically means you get really fantastic details on this. And to be fair, it's one of the best in the market. With the build plate, it's not the largest. It's 16.5 by 7.2 by 17 centimeters. So although it's not the absolute largest, you can still get a decent amount of miniatures on there. It's very solidly built, and for those of you who are in the miniature space, the 8K Mini has always been a really good go-to one to go for, but just a little bit pricey. And that's where the Mini 8KS comes in. So I grabbed the box, unboxed it, and started pulling it all out. And at first glance, this thing looks almost identical to the original Mini 8K. However, it does come in highlighter yellow, which is definitely an acquired taste. I think some people will love this, some people hate it. I've always preferred the more muted colors, if you can call them that, on pretty much all other 3D printers. But yeah, I guess, you know, preference is a thing. So I popped it all out, got it set up on my table, and then began going through the initial process. So there's a few things that are different to the Mini 8K, and they might jump out to you if you already own that machine or if you heard about it beforehand. And the first one is that it's only a single linear rail. Now, a Frozen say that it's a thicker one, so it should be far more robust. And because it's not got a massive build plate and it's not carrying as much weight as some of the bigger machines like the Mighty or the Mega, it shouldn't come in as an issue. During my printing and my testing of this, I didn't have any issues at all with it, but I've only been using this for a very short amount of time, so it's hard to tell at this stage, and only long-term testing is really going to show that. The other thing to note as well is the USB port has moved. Instead of being on the front, like it is on the original Mini 8K, it's now on the side. Again, depending on your setup and everything else, this might be a deal breaker for you. It might be something that just doesn't bother you. In my opinion, at this price point, it's probably not going to be going in like a 3D print farm, so therefore it's not going to have to worry too much about being knocked up against another machine. But for those of you who do have multiple machines and using them for different things, it might be a bit of an issue. However, you don't really have to worry about dropping resin on your USB stick, which I guess that's always a nice thing to have. So popping all of this out and getting it set up is really, really easy. And I've come to really like the Frozen setup, especially with the way it does like the bed leveling and all of that jazz. So all you need to do is basically obviously get it all plugged in, peel off all of the goody good stuff on there, and make sure you do peel it all off. You don't want to leave anything on like the vat or on the build plate because that is going to cause some massive issues for you. So you get all of the bits of plastic peeled off and then you're pretty much good to go. Don't pop the vat on yet because you need to make sure that you level that build plate. And it's really easy to do. And I've got a couple of tips for you when it comes to leveling frozen printers. And these are things that have really helped me out because when I first got them, I wasn't familiar with them and I followed the instructions and it always just seemed to be slightly out. So the first thing that you do is you loosen these four screws on the side of the build plate. And then you go through the menu and you then start the leveling process. What this will do at this point is it will drop the build plate down. And because you've loosened those screws, it gives it that flexibility to kind of go up and down and do all the angles and stuff like that. And it does suggest to use a piece of paper, but I would really recommend use a nice thick piece of card or at least a piece of paper that's been folded over a couple of times. Whenever I've used just a single sheet of A4, it's always been just that little bit too tight and it causes issues when I actually come to print. When I've been using a card or something like that, I found it works perfectly every single time. Once it's done its leveling, it will then ask you to tighten up those four screws. And one thing that I'd recommend with this, and this has worked well for me every time, is do them one at a time, but very slowly. So tighten them all up until they're just at that biting point, and then go back in and do them like one by one, but do them on like alternating sides. And the reason for this is if you do both of them on like the left hand side of the build plate, it then can sometimes just knock it slightly out of alignment. But what I found is if you take them to that biting point and slowly tighten them, you get a really nice level. Once that's done, you are pretty much good to go and start with your printing. So pop your vat on there, fill it up with your resin, and then head over to whatever chosen slicer that you're going to be using. So for this, I was using Voxel Labs just because that was something that already had the profile built into it on the USB stick. But it will work with Chitu Box, it will work with Lychee, and it will work with pretty much all your major slicers. Get whatever files you're going to go for, get them printing. Now, you're normally meant to do a test print, but I don't 
a lot of the time, which is probably really bad practice. But I just went off and I started printing off different files. I wanted to see what the quality was like. I ran off and I printed a range of different miniatures, ranging from really kind of small things through to larger things as well. So I started off with these two small little orcs here by Station Forge, and they look fantastic. There's a lot of detail on there. And I was using the Frozen 8K resin with this, and that's because of this really nice dark gray resin. And, and that means I don't have to go off and prime it to really show off the details for this. It'll capture nicely on the camera. Shows up really nicely. These are some very nice looking prints. Very crisp, very clean, got some fantastic details. And bearing in mind, this was at the default 0.05 millimeter layer height. I was getting some really crisp looking details. I also printed off this Pirate Lady. She's a 75 millimeter model. And this is one of the cleanest prints that I've seen in quite some time. Her skin looks really, really smooth. And there are some layer lines, and I could probably start to get rid of those if I went down to a lower layer height and messed around with the settings. But considering this is out of the box at the default settings, it pulled off a really crisp, clean, and smooth print. I was really, really impressed with this one. I then went off and printed this larger Undead Giant by Mammoth Factory Games. And this looks fantastic. It's got all of these little details all over it. And I've got to say, it really stands out. It looks fantastic. It's got loads of little details on them. They all came out looking really clean and looking fantastic. And this is a larger model as well. So I was impressed to see what it could do at that size. Next up, I printed off this like undead ghost creature by Mama Factory Games as well. And the thing that really stood out to me on this one was the fabric on like the robes and the cloak and everything. When you zoom in there, it looks amazing. Like the detail it pulls off on this. And it, I think this is just a testimony to 3D printers now. They pull off fantastic looking prints, even in this sort of like a budget area. So it, this so far was looking great. I then moved across onto something larger and it's this Dreadnought Proxy by Gamuk. And again, everything looks good. On this larger size, you probably do want to start messing around with some anti-aliasing or either dropping that layer height because on the flatter surfaces, because they were like big, smooth, flat surfaces, I was starting to see more layer lines on that. But again, not too bad. And bearing in mind that once I throw a primer over this to start printing, that's pretty much going to go away, so I won't have to worry about it. It's one thing worthwhile bearing in mind that even though this is an 8K resolution display, it's not going to work miracles and get rid of that, you know, the layer line stuff that does happen there. You can mess around with the settings and you can definitely minimize it more more than I've done in this, so that's also a good thing to know as well. Print quality wise, this thing is fantastic. It's as good as the original 8K Mini, which is just weird considering the price difference between these things. It's a really, really appealing proposition. If you're in the market for a miniature printer, this might be it. A couple of other things to note as well, but I did some tinkering with it just to see whether or not things were interchangeable between the different ones. You can use the same build plate on them as well. They're basically exactly the same, which is, I suppose, nice to know if you've already got like an original 8K Mini and you want to know if you can swap bits around. You can also swap the VAT around as well, which again, nice to know just in case you need it. Also, when it's printing, it seemed almost silent. I was really impressed with how quiet this is. And again, a benefit of having something that is a smaller, more compact machine only has that one rail on there as well, so hopefully that'll be causing less of a noise. Compared to other machines I've used in the past that can make quite a bit of noise, this thing is almost silent. And I guess that's maybe why they went for the highlighter pen yellow, so it stood out and people remembered it's there. So at this early stage, would I recommend that you pick one of these up? And based on my first impressions of this, printing a few things off and trying it out, I definitely think this is gonna be one to keep an eye on. You get fantastic print quality, a decent sized build plate as well, and all in all, it's really easy to use. It Feels solid, despite it being the more budget version, it still feels really, really solid and well made. And I've been so incredibly impressed with it so far. If I was in the market now to buy a new 3D printer for miniatures and printing off miniatures and everything else, I, I genuinely think this would be one of the ones that I would go for. You've got alternatives out there. So you've got things like the Mars 3 and the Mars 3 Pro, which have been things that I've really liked in the past. But this has that extra resolution so you can get some more crisp details and just get some slightly more detailed prints. It also really contends incredibly well at that price point. Frozen say this is the cheapest 8K printer that you can get on the market at the moment. And for the price point that they're asking, I believe it's like $300 currently. You really can't go wrong with that. So all in all, during my initial testing, I'm really impressed with it. Got some fantastic prints, easy to use, feels very solid. And if you don't mind the highlighter yellow, you know what? This could be one worthwhile picking up. So I hope you've enjoyed that video. If you've got any questions, I throw them down in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. I will do a follow-up in probably like a month's time or so just to give an updated view on this, how it compares to things like the 8K Mini and just my thoughts on it as I've used it for a little bit longer. I have only used it now for about a week, so it's hard to really give you a fully detailed view of it. 
but based on those early impressions, it's a really good printer. So very impressed for Ozone. So I hope you've enjoyed that. Hit the like and subscribe button and come along for some more content in the future. Thanks so much to Frozen for sending this over to me and sponsoring the channel. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.